Howdy folks, Troy with VTwinsTheVH.com coming back to you on uh, another video regarding the installation of the Gear Vendors Overdrive. In previous uh, videos I've shown the unit, I've shown how to mount it on the transmission. Now I have the engine and transmission along with the Gear Vendor unit in the vehicle. My rear end is in the vehicle and now what I want to do is I want to trim my drive shaft so it's at the proper length. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is remove my coilover shocks and get my rear end up into a ride height position. And the reason that I want to do that is, well, for obvious reasons, that's basically where my drive shaft would spend most of its time, but it's also going to be the shortest point. In my little uh, crazy diagram here, you'll see this is my transmission yoke here. This is my rear end yoke here. And this line represents my drive shaft. This overdrawn arc represents my drive shaft going up and down as the rear end travels up and down in the car. As you'll notice, the shortest point is going to be a straight line. So in other words, I want to measure my drive shaft at this point so I know that that's the shortest point and then measure it um, in a fully compressed manner and also a fully extended manner to make sure that when I do cut my drive shaft It's not too short and it binds into the end of the overdrive unit or transmission if that's your case And when it's fully extended my yoke isn't pulled too far out of the transmission So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my coil over shocks. I'll show you that my suspension is a uh, four link suspension and basically I don't have leaf springs or anything like that so I have these shocks I can take these shocks unbolt them here from the bottom of the car on both sides and I can get the rear end up into a ride height position so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you where we're at so what I've done now is I jacked my rear end up into a ride height position or a position where my drive shaft is level with my transmission. I've done this by measuring the distance from the center of my tail shaft coming off of my overdrive or back of the transmission to the floor and from the center of my pinion on my rear end to the floor. So I have the same exact measurement because my car is level on the left. So now I know that my yoke for my transmission and my yoke for my um, rear end are exactly even or perpendicular with each other. So now I know that the distance from my transmission to the floor is the same exact distance as it is from the center of my rear end pinion to the floor. So I know my drive shaft is fully level. That's going to be the shortest distance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the yoke on my rear end to the yoke on my transmission. But there's one other thing we want to take a look at. We want to make sure that our yoke is not all the way into the transmission and it's also not hanging out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the yoke, we're going to remove it from the transmission, we're going to look at how long it is and figure out how much of it we want hanging out of the transmission. We're going to... Okay, so here's our transmission yoke here. And if I come in closely, I don't know if you can see it, you'll see a line right in this area. That's a line of some white grease that I had put on this yoke when I put it in there and the seal on the gear vendor's overdrive squeezed my grease back and created this line. That way there, I know that this line is when my um, yoke is completely into the transmission. So I don't want it to be there when I measure, but that is when it's all the way in. So if you look, at my tape measure, I don't know if you can see it, um, when I'm all the way in, my yoke is about two and a half inches long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this yoke so it hangs out of the back of the transmission about a half an inch. That will give me two inches into the transmission and a half inch out. That'll give me enough room so if it needs to extend or if it needs to compress, or let's say I'm fully compressed and I'm really on it and I'm flexing some bushings, which I don't really have a lot of, but in normal cars or regular cars, they're not running heim joints. Um, there's some rubber bushings, so things will move around. You wanna have a little buffer zone. Okay, so now I'm in under the car. I've got my yoke in the back of my gear vendors unit. 
you can see the line here from my grease and then you can see the line on the seal the distance between that line where the seal for the grease is that's when I'm all the way in right now I'm uh, measured off of my seal to that line I have a half an inch so I can go in a half an inch I can come out quite a ways because I want to keep most of my yoke on that shaft for strength purposes so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure from my the center of my bearing cup in my transmission yoke to the center of my bearing cup on my rear end that's going to give me my drive shaft length I'm going to go ahead and do that now okay so I got my measurement between my transmission yoke and my rear end yoke and my that's my distance as we're back to my little diagram again distance from here to here when it's perpendicular my measurement happens to be 38 and a half inches that's going to be the distance of the length of my drive shaft from the center of the bearing cup to the center of the bearing cup what I want to do next because I like to double check everything is I'm going to fully compress my suspension up as high as I can and I'm going to take that measurement again and see what that one is then I'm going to extend my rear end all the way down fully relaxed and take a measurement there I want to see what that variation is I want to see what this measurement's going to be when I'm down here and I want to see what this measurement's going to be when I'm up here to make sure that in all circumstances I'm not going to bury that yoke into the transmission or, or overdrive unit and I'm not going to pull it out too far so I'm going to double check those measurements now okay so I've got my suspension completely compressed all the way up as high as it goes when I say as high as it goes I'm up against the pinion snubber so I mean this is like the suspension fully bottomed out I made my measurement my measurement hasn't changed I'm really not much higher in my little arc like when I'm up I'm really mu not very much higher than perpendicular it's just the design of my suspension so I measured that I know I'm good now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna drop down my transmission jack and I'm gonna let that rear end hang basically just just hang with no nothing holding it to, to hyper extend it which will even be further than the shocks will allow it to go and double check it just to make sure even if I even if I broke a shock I'm not gonna have a problem so I'm gonna do that now so now I've taken another measurement my rear end fully extended I'm only a quarter of an inch difference so in other words from perpendicular all the way up I'm the same all the way down I'm only a quarter of an inch uh, longer shorter whatever I'm only a quarter inch difference so my so the point is that half inch buffer zone that I put between the transmission and the yoke is perfect because I'm only going to use a quarter of an inch that gives me another quarter of an inch for extenuating circumstances you know a lot of body flex or a lot of suspension flex so that's really important so now I know exactly how long I want to make my drive shaft and I will show you um, on the shaft exactly where I measured it and how that is next. So here is my drive shaft here. What I'm going to do is basically the same thing as I did with my transmission is I'm going to put my tape measure in the center of this bearing cup here and then my other measurement is going to want to be in the center of the opposite bearing cup. That's my original measurement but I'm going to want to make this drive shaft my measurement that I came up with which is here which is 38 and a half inches so now we've got our drive shaft measurements all made I can take my drive shaft down have it cut to size they'll cut it they'll re-weld it and rebalance it and then I'll just doll it up I'll put some fresh paint on it put my u-joints in it and I can install it in the car and then I'm all done my name is Troy Kane my company is vtwins the vh.com you can find me on Facebook vtwins the v8s.com troy kane um, you can find me on youtube troy kane you probably watch me now but uh, i do all kinds of repairs if you need something to done to your car just give me a shout i can do things for you i'll do things for people all over the place um, and I, I can also help you if you're a do-it-yourselfer guy and you want to know how to do something shoot me a little email or something i'll do whatever i can to help you i really appreciate you tuning in and if you could help me out and subscribe to my youtube channel that gives me some followers and it makes it makes sense for me to do these videos because these videos do take a lot of time but enough of that i appreciate you tuning in thanks a lot